No, I mean the, the, the suicide part. If it oh. Like that. Before oh. you blow your brains out over some attractive upper middle class white woman just because you would fuck her brains out, I was thinking. What? Maybe we could take a moment to talk about things she told you. What is going on? To talk about the things that people like her will never tell you. The Money by Arthur Fox. You know her. Overeducated, underemployed, bridging into 40 with no real prospects, no real anything. And then one day, a bill finally arrives that cannot be paid. One which even the family that made her feel invincible all of her life can no longer bear. And then it all falls down. Then comes the self-pity, the woe is me, the toxic, dishonest belief that even if you'd have a shot, you never had a chance. But let me ask you something. Where was this person five years ago? I'll tell you where they were. They were pretending they never saw it coming. They were racking up debt, desperately hoping they would never lose imaginary face with kombucha shipping celebrities. Ten years ago, they were blowing every cent they made or could borrow in service to a hashtag. Shoes, travel, asinine brunches. Fifteen years ago, forget it laughing it up in the hollowed halls of higher learning acting as if they were somehow smart enough to get a degree in angst anthropology but not smart enough to know they were digging their own graves and now now they want the world to feel sorry for them so they won't tell you about what they really come from they won't tell you about the safety net that still sits secretly beneath them. They won't tell you how they did it to themselves. But the past is the past. Nobody can run from it forever. And the numbers don't lie. And even if they can't deny their guilt once you throw their mimosa tabs and aluminum laptops in their faces, they would still say that it wasn't their fault. This man is speaking facts, but he's mad savage for no reason. Yeah. That they didn't know better. They would still say that they were told their whole lives that if they did what they were supposed to do, that they would end up safe and sound. But where are the people who said this? When was this so-called speech they gave? Where did this happen? Who wrote it down? What did it say? They don't exist. It doesn't yeah. exist. And I don't know about you, folks. Oh, he's lying about folks? He's calling them animals? Some pigs? Some insects? But I don't feel sorry for them. And since you wouldn't be in this room unless you were at least a little bit like her, I'm gonna have to say it. I don't feel sorry for you. But we don't need to feel sorry for ourselves. We don't need to feel anything. What we need to do is stop talking, stop complaining, and actually do something about the mess we are in. And tonight, that is exactly what we are going to do. I think Sarah's at this speech right now. Maybe. Wait, manipulate. Seems like a family wishing crowd tonight. Lots of sad single people. I'll swap things around so it seems like that part is the grand finale. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin by telling you that if I've learned one thing, it is this. Money is not the most important thing. It is the only important thing. Not, nothing that was ever not about money was not about money. Not even the things that seem to come close. You show me any good thing in the world, anything at all, and I'll show you why it doesn't mean a goddamn thing without money. Hmm. 
Oh, are you him now? Oh, so now I'm the dude. What is a life without money? A life without money is a lie. An endless exhaustion, six jobs or no job. Cards declined, minimum wage clerks who stare you down like a leaper, like a leper. Creditors who call you day and night. Melting your existence into pennies on the dollar. The realization that most people will consider your insecurity and suffering to be more of an impolite imposition than anything else. What kind of life is that? What is love without money? Love without money is a lie. A sad fuck in the woods. The bitterness of someone who realizes they've misplaced their faith. That you're never going to make it, no matter how much they believe in you. The parties you go to where they start looking around for somebody else. Someone who can take them places. Who they could build something with. Nothing but a betrayal waiting to happen. What kind of love is that? What is hope without money? Hope without money is a lie. An empty threat in an echo chamber. An aristocrat who respects your pronouns and your partitions while they pay you nickels a shovel dog shit. Oh boy. The journalists who mine your tragedies for more than you'll ever resolve them. What kind of hope is that? Yeah. Why about some the piano too? Boy, do I ever wish I could play the piano. What else I gotta lie about the freaking chairs? D desperate thirst. In the moment, hang while you drink water. Nobody can accuse you of having it to be contrived. You want to save it for exactly the right time. Actually, I guess now it's fine. Where do I leave my car keys? Must be in the dressing room somewhere. Yeah, let's do that. I think I let it go too long. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. What else do I have to lie about? What's What else is up here? Do I go downstairs? What am I? Some hillbilly preacher screaming in tongues? I don't do that crowd work chit chat. Oh man. I lied about the arts. Hope, love, family. Oh. And what is a family without money? A family without money is a lie. A family without money is nothing. A family without money is a father who can't take you fishing, but not to the dentist. The kind of family that functions only so long as the credits can roll an hour late, an hour later. And for those who charge without protecting it, a family without money is a moral failure, one that can never be erased. It is a cliff hanging, it is a cliff hanging hand that slips from your grasp. A future that falls away. And as for what happens to families like that, and to people like you, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that you have no future. The good news is that there is no future. That's crazy. The light at the end of the tunnel is not the end of the tunnel. Your mothers and fathers, your brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters, they're looking to you. The clock is turning every time you see them. No, every time you see them, one more moment passes before it will be your turn to be one who is dependent on. And you know what you have to do. You've got to take a chance on the only thing you've got left. But will you have the courage to do it? Or will you keep on going as if the little you still have without it will somehow last forever? Will you keep standing in that house, staring out that window, or will you wake up, take control of your life, and make the sacrifice that could save them all? Mm -hmm.
Okay, now we're back Not in the house. Much. Rituals by Sarah Stone. Oh, great. Another freaking story. For better or worse, there really is no place like home. In all my years of living on my own, I never achieved even a fraction of the sense of place that I still feel every time I walk through this door. Everything is just where it was and everyone is just who they were. But at the same time, the older you get, the more the same comfort starts to scare the hell out of you. You guys really need a dishwasher. It's a waste of water, Sarah. I know, but everyone else is wasting it. Why shouldn't you? I'm not suggesting it because I'm worried about you putting any kind of strain on yourself. I just wish you would take it easy. When I first moved back here, I tried to top out with the groceries, but I never bought the right things. Yet they never told me to stop. They just started restocking things before I did. And when I tried to cook myself, it was so much worse than what we were used to. Because both of my parents are amazing cooks that I eventually gave up on it. I tried to help out with the gardening, even fixing things around the house. But mom had a way she wanted the yard to look. And it took dad twice as long to do anything with me helping him. You can't be an adult in the place you grew up. It isn't your job there, and you can't break up the order of things in a place where that order is everything. All you can do is dry the dishes you can't clean, vacuum the floors that you can't build, mow the lawn that you can't grow. And worst of all is that you also feel the opposite of fear. It feels good to be in a place that feels like sanctuary, that makes you feel safe. But you're always thinking that you won't be ready when they're gone. Or when they need you precisely because they aren't. Sarah. What do you have to yell? Right well, I don't know. And that was not the scale. Plus, he's, he's older. So he's probably like losing his hearing or whatever. Give me a hand with something. Go see what he needs. I need a break. Washing dishes? Damn. Just leave them, Mom. I can do it. Mom getting old. Lie about concern. So you lying about that too? Damn. What's wrong, Dad? You hear that? Hear what? One of the stupid cats. It must have gotten out of your sister's room. Which one? The one that likes to get out of your sister's room. Bobo. Bobo the cat. Hmm. I don't hear anything. I heard a meow. You know what your mother is like? The allergy? So, she's allergic to cats. But has a daughter that has a bunch of cats. It makes um, sense, because daughter doesn't listen to him anyway, so... That, that is true. I'm going to help her get ready for bed. You find the cat and get it back downstairs. Alright. Conceal Bobo's escape. So you're gonna let him stay up here? I don't know if he's just saying that the cat got out to give me a pretense to go down there and talk to her. But I should probably start oh, looking in the in basement. The basement. The cat or my sister? Your sister. Damn. Sarah's sister. Wait, 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 I go, I go upstairs? No, wait, no, downstairs. So, where's, where, where's the downstairs at? Oh, there it is. Alright. Alright, time to see what my sister is all about, because I have not heard good things. Homemade beer. Dad used to throw a lot of homemade beer down here. Nobody kept track of how much anybody was taking, or at least not until it became obvious that someone was taking way more than their share. At the same time, nobody could prove anything, and nobody was going to be able to prove anything. The last time Dad put some down here, 
he put more and even better stuff than he had before basically asking for it to get taken so he could justify flipping out the night he did that I just quietly moved it upstairs without telling him I stayed unswiped the issue couldn't flare it up and nobody ever mentioned it ever again so she took it upstairs she yeah so she took the beer yeah my sister gets everything delivered to her now hardly ever even leaves the house I guess this is the brightest, the bright and shining future we were promised. Lie about the cat. Oh, it is Amazon. That's crazy. My sister has always had a lock on her door. And is she a maniac? What? She, <laughs> she a serial killer. I told you she did. Even before the basement became her apartment, in her defense, mom's idea of knocking on a door when we were growing up was to knock and then immediately open it a half second later. In a way, going back and forth on that lock was where everything started. It was rainy enough today for her to sleep through all of it. Even if she is up, she hasn't been up for long enough to make it worth bothering her. Forget it, I'll just go and tell dad I tried. I've dealt with enough stuff today. That's it. I want to see the sister. Not go back in yeah, there. I want to be the sister, dude. That's crazy. But if I don't at least try to talk to her, she'll just tell Dad she didn't know anything about it. Uh -oh. My whole life, my father has used me as a sword, and my sister has used me as a shield. You just bang up against yourself. No choice. Two years ago, while I was in the middle of ki killing myself what? trying to pay the minimums of my credit cards, I oh. had to read the rest of that sentence. <laughs> killing myself to make rent and killing myself to avoid going into overdraft. My sister would try to kill herself for real. She's a suicidal one. Okay. Must be nice. What? Whoa, Fan oh, oh, no, no, no. We're not doing this. No, that's too much. Don't even think about something like that. You don't really mean it. She stayed at a mental hospital downtown for a few days before my parents moved her out to a private facility in Guelph? Okay, they said they're in Toronto, right? That's Canada, so... Mm -hmm. Alright. So then, I'm guessing Guelph is also in Canada. Attentive staff, the encouragement to express any emotion you want, a schedule laid out for you like a kindergartner. For a little while, she got better. Though I don't know if it is or isn't incredible what everybody treating you like the center of the universe can do. Surely it ought to do something. But then life goes on, and the people around you go back to being the people they used to be. The people they actually are. So she did too. Hey, are you up? Dad thinks one of the cats escaped. Are they all in there with you? She's not answering. All right, well, if you can hear me, let me know. Or send me a text. Please don't let their whole interaction be text throughout the whole game. I really want to see It's kind of suspicious, though, that the cat would run away or get away if the door is always locked. Well, maybe there's a window in there. I don't know what's in find that room. I suppose I might as well check the rest of the house for the cat. It probably did get out if Dad heard it. Let me ask you something. Where does the depression end and the rude, self-centered, and miserable asshole begin? Before you think that I don't love my sister, please consider. But I put up with the nonsense of what dealing with her entails if I did not. With my mother. With my father. If we didn't occasionally think a cruel or heartless thing about her, do you believe that we could possibly endure it? I think she's a sick person. I know that she is not really in control of herself and that this is the darkest fate which can touch anybody. 
But in the midst of all her tragedy, all of her setbacks, all I want to know is this. What about the rest of us? What about the people? The families who have no responsible choice but to exist in their blast radius. The people who don't have any more of a way out of it than they do. And I know we're supposed to go to counseling too. But even if it helped, is it really worth tripling the bill? Even if we could afford it. And does your life really end up any less mired in her stuff? Or do you become even worse? What if it only ends up be making you as obsessed with her as she is with herself? And how does it end? It seems somewhere between unlikely and impossible that my sister will ever have anything resembling the social life, the social or productive person ever again. If these people never get fixed, what is the point of them being slightly less broken? What is the point of all this pain?